Hello, I'm Roger, and I'm here with Chip Dog, and we are coming to you from the high desert of central New Mexico. You are watching Multiple Sclerosis, the monster inside me, my story. Okay, welcome back. Uh, today is November 3rd. It's been a little over two weeks since I uh, did my last show. Uh, so I thought I would check in, let everyone know what's going on. Lots gone on here in the last couple of weeks. Uh, so i uh, got a lot to talk about. Um, I saw my neurosurgeon and uh, we got some things planned out and I'll talk about that here in a little bit. But this is a show about multiple sclerosis and my multiple sclerosis. And so I'm going to kind of go back a little bit and talk about the same stuff that I talked about on the very first episode in case any of you missed it. Uh, I talked a little bit about my history and the beginning of my multiple sclerosis. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that and uh, just let you all know that I am no stranger to this horrible monster. Uh, back in October of 2011, my younger sister, six years younger than me, Chandra, was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And I'm not exactly sure exactly what it was. Uh, primary remitting seems to come to mind, but I'm not exactly sure. Um, but it was tough. She had uh, she had a tough time. It was tough on her. Um, you know, we uh, in 2012, uh, about four or five months later. You know, her birthday was on uh, uh, April 13th, and we celebrate, celebrated her birthday right about the same time as Easter. So we kind of did it all at once, and you could tell she wasn't doing well. And um, wasn't more than a week or so, a couple weeks after that, she was in the hospital and then she was transferred to hospice care. And at that point we knew what was going on and um, what was gonna happen. And uh, they moved her to hospice on like a Sunday and they thought she would probably have at least a week. Uh, I went to work Monday morning and I just had this urge that I needed to get down and see her. And so I found a replacement. Someone came in and, and took my place that day. And I went down to the hospice, uh, Caseman Presbyterian uh, here in Albuquerque and uh, spent a little bit of time with her and within two hours after I got there uh, we were holding her hand as she passed away and took her last breath and that was just a horrible horrible thing and I never imagined uh, at that moment that I would be dealing with the same kind of nasty disease and I didn't know as much about it then as I do now and uh, that, was a, that was a tough deal um, a lot of us took it hard uh, I thought something like that would never happen to me, you know, like I said. So, uh, in, uh, well, probably 2018, I started having some effects and feeling some kind of weird stuff in my legs and a little bit of numbness. On into 2019, I still did continue to do backpacking trips and a lot of camping trips and hiking. Uh, and then in the spring of 2020, well, yeah, I guess it was right about springtime. Um, had some serious issues with numbness from the chest down and ended up in the uh, emergency room. And then at that point, uh, I ended up downtown at Presbyterian. I was diagnosed with primary progressive multiple sclerosis and a brain tumor on the same Saturday afternoon. And uh, that was really tough. When I was diagnosed with the multiple sclerosis first by the um, neurologist that came in, they were explaining this to me and all I could think about was kind of a tunnel vision thing looking back at how my sister passed away and I just envisioned myself you know in that spot and it was terrifying uh, well it's been almost a year and a half later and uh, as it turns out my biggest monster right now right now is the brain tumor and uh, my surgery on June 30th removed most of it uh, they're going to eventually use uh, a gamma knife to finish cutting it away from where it's growing into my brain and, uh, and remove it. But I had an issue with um, a leakage of cerebral spinal fluid, CSF, and uh, it accumulated in my brain. And after eight weeks, I ended up back in the emergency room, back in the hospital, and they cut me open basically from ear to ear over here, kind of around in the front, kind of like that, pulled everything back and I tried to patch the leak and um, they put in a new uh, plate back there and after they removed the old one in attempts to stop the leak. Um, it didn't really work. 
And so I'm still dealing with leaking cerebral spinal fluid into my head. So I had an appointment with my neurosurgeon a week and a half ago, Dr. Carlson. Uh, he didn't like the way things were going. It wasn't going away. It was just continuously getting worse. So we're scheduled for uh, a couple of more surgeries. I have one coming up day after tomorrow. Um, I've been kind of stressed out a little bit. It's not fun knowing what lies ahead. I've experienced three brain surgeries so far and uh, recovery is very difficult. The last time I was in the hospital was for 10 days. This one should not be that bad. The goal is to put a drain tube into my head and, and with a, a, a tube, drain it down into my stomach cavity somewhere and then hopefully my body will absorb it. That's the whole, that's the whole plan for this one. And also while I was there uh, with the neurosurgeon, we were looking at the MRI and the pressure has been so bad from the cerebral spinal fluid that it, it actually pushed the prosthetic plate away from my head and now that thing is just floating back here. And I knew something was wrong. It, it, it's just been really tender and sore. And so probably the second surgery after this first one will probably be uh, addressing that and hopefully removing the rest of this tumor uh, with a gamma knife. But uh, the reason why I started out this, this episode with uh, the MS is I just want everyone to just be aware and pay attention to your health. And uh, you know, some of the smallest signs uh, can mean uh, evidently moving on to some of the worst things. And it's hard to, uh, you know, some of these smaller signs, you just kind of look the other way and say, well, I'll be fine tomorrow. But sometimes we've got to get these things checked out. And if you do, um, hopefully the results will be much better um, in the end. So, so please pay attention to uh, any health concerns. There's a lot of info online. Any questions you have, you can go to YouTube. You can go just Google whatever uh, multiple sclerosis and the different types, you know, primary progressive, remitting progressive, uh, or and primary remitting. There's a lot of different types. And MS is one of those diseases that uh, is like a fingerprint. There are no two cases alike. It affects us all differently because of where the lesions are placed and how it works. And, and uh, so everyone, everyone has uh, different health issues with uh, multiple sclerosis. And my sister, got, she got it bad. And that was just a horrible, horrible thing to watch. Um, so I've got through pretty much most of this. I'm gonna go through, uh, I'm gonna be admitted into the hospital on Friday. Uh, uh, Pre-op will call me tomorrow, which is Thursday, and let me know what time I need to be admitted. I did take another COVID test yesterday. I don't know how many of those things I've taken. I have never tested positive for COVID, but that's the whole goal is to kind of stay away from everyone so that I can, uh, you know, recover without getting sick from any anything else. Um, they're gonna. I don't know if they're gonna remove this prosthetic plate or if they're just gonna put a drain and then move on to. Um, the next surgery and, and plan that out. Uh, but yeah, I've got a busy, busy week coming up. Hopefully I won't be in the hospital more than three or four days. At least that's the goal. Last time I was in there for 10. And that was really, really tough. Uh, so usually at the end of my show, I like to give some shout outs. And um, today I'm gonna give some shout outs to, of course, all my MS Warrior friends. Stay strong, my friends. I know it's tough. Very often we end up doing things because we have to, not because we want to. And uh, it's hard to get motivated sometimes. I totally get it. I'm dealing with a brain tumor and this crazy balloon of fluid in my head. But I must say that it seems like to me in the last couple of days, my this uh, area in my head is not filling up with fluid like it has been in the past and I can feel parts of my skull here that I couldn't feel before because it was just so ballooned up. And so hopefully that's a good sign and maybe that'll mean that my surgery coming up may not be um, as extensive as perhaps they are planning. Um, so I, back again, I wanna say hello to all my MS Warrior fans and stay strong. Uh, another person I wanna give a shout out to, and I really don't mention it very often, but I wanna talk about my daughter, Melina, and give her a shout out and tell her I, I love her and I do appreciate all that she's done for me. And I know it's tough for her. She works a full-time job and, and she feels like, you know, 
taking care of me is a necessity on her part. And I, I really appreciate that so much. And, and I probably don't say thank you enough to her because she really, you know, yeah, and she's taken me down to the hospital at one o'clock in the morning and has taken me here to doctor's appointments and has been patient with me when I am stupid or when I'm cranky or just being plain ugly, you know, and those of us with MS know that that, that can happen at times and I try so hard to uh, to not let that uh, uh, come out for me because that that's not who I am. But I want to get back to Melina and, and just thank her and give her a shout out and she she doesn't even watch these shows because she sees everything that goes on so uh you know she i'll have to tell her to watch it and let her know that i gave her a shout out maybe she'll watch it but but i really appreciate her being around and helping me and helping take care of me i also want to give a shout out to one of my former employees and i probably have done this before but i want to give a shout out to joseph lujan and he always takes time to respond um at the bottom of the page here when the video is over and and uh, he's so nice and generous and we worked hard together and always appreciate everything as he did and his positive attitude and and he writes such positive things uh, on, on the bottom of the page that it almost brings tears to my eyes you know and he's such a good guy and I wanted to uh, give him a shout out and uh, let him know that I uh, appreciate all he uh, does I want to give a shout out to my uh, my board gaming buddies uh, we played early last week because uh, I was going to be in the hospital this Friday, so we weren't able to play, but we get on and play every couple of weeks, or get together and play every couple of weeks. Crazy, geeky, nerdiest board games you could think of. And so we uh, we do that, and I consider that my brain exercise. Since I'm not in an office anymore or taking care of business, uh, I rely on, on board games. Uh, Turn-based board games, I don't play, play first-person games or or real-time games. I play board uh, turn-based games that where you have to stop and think and deal with other players around you. And I do a lot of that online on Steam. And I do. I prefer to do it around with my gaming buddies here at the table. Well, I think uh, that'll be it. The next time I will speak to you will be after my surgery, obviously. I'm going to try to take a camera in, uh, in the hospital with me and maybe film a little bit of me trying to recover. I don't know how much that I want to show because that is just no fun. But it also helps people understand, you know, this double whammy I'm dealing with is brutal. But uh, I want to say thank you to everyone for watching. And uh, if you like what you see, please give me a thumbs up. And uh, please leave me a message down below. And I'd love to give you a shout out uh, next time I'm online and, and uh, put the show out and uh, give you some recognition that you deserve. And I appreciate everybody taking the time for watching. And until next time, thank you for watching Multiple Sclerosis, The Monster Inside Me. This is my story.